Hey guys and welcome to my February reading wrap up. This month I read seven books which again is amazing. I feel like I just keep saying this but I've been in such an amazing reading flow for like the past couple of months and I'm loving it so so much. Also it's really cold outside at the moment so I can finally wear this sweater again which makes me really happy. This is also the sweater that I wore in my very first booktube video so I feel like I've come full circle or something. But anyway this month I read some amazing books. I also read some not so amazing books so let's just get started with this video and talk about all the books that I read in February. The first book that I finished this month was The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. This book is about a girl named Jude and when Jude was a child her parents were murdered and she and her sisters were transported to the fairy world and they grew up there but mortals in the fairy world are treated very badly and this book is kind of about Jude dealing with that but also about all the political intrigue. Basically there's just all sorts of drama going on. So this book was a new January release and and it was very very hyped up and I feel like people either love it very very much or like really hate it and for me I'm not as completely in love with it as some people seem to do but I did really enjoy it and I did find it a very fun read the thing is that I didn't have any expectations whatsoever when I picked up this book and since my expectations weren't that high I was quite pleasantly surprised like this book is just very very enjoyable and just a lot of fun it's definitely not perfect it definitely has some flaws and I can see why some people really hate it Hate it. But I thought overall if you don't take it too seriously it's just a fun read about fairy about magic and about this girl navigating her way through this like fairy world. I did really love some of the characters I thought especially Jude and her sisters had quite some character developments. And I thought some of the relationships and the conflicting feelings about living in fairy and also sort of loving fairy but also not really belonging there was quite well executed. There were some points in the book that I wasn't completely sure about the plot. Especially towards the end I wasn't completely sure about like the motivations for certain decisions. And then the characters were all like but we have to do this and I'm like do you though because I don't really think you have to. Some of the things just came out of nowhere and happened very very quickly and I was just like okay well let's just go with it and not question it too much. I think this book gives me very much the same vibes as the Shadowhunter books by Cassandra Clare. I think you can definitely tell that Holly Black and Cassandra Clare have worked together. It's not like their writing style is the same or like the story is the same but it gives the same vibe. So yeah, as I said I very much enjoyed reading this and I'm definitely going to continue with this series because I really want to see where this story is going to go next. And I gave The Cruel Prince 4 out of 5 stars. The next book that I read this month was The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Eva Lavender by Leslie Walton. This book is about a girl named Eva Lavender who is born with wings. And it's also about her family and like previous generations. So it's a story about her grandmother, about her mother and her own story. And it's very much magical realism. So with this book, I just, I'm not completely sure. I've never felt more conflicted about a book. So the best thing about this book is definitely the writing style. Because it's very beautiful and very flowery. It's definitely the sort of writing style that I like. And since this book has so many characters. Because of course it takes place over such a long time. I think it did a really good job with establishing all those characters and like telling their stories. But then also some of the things that I did not like. First of all the use of magical realism was a little bit weird sometimes. I know it's magical realism so like it has to be weird like nothing can be weird if magic is a real thing. But sometimes it just came out of nowhere without any explanation and it just felt very sudden and like somehow out of place. Especially at the beginning like the stories being set up as like taking place in our world, in a normal world, and then something completely magical happens out of nowhere. It's never questioned or explained and it feels very sudden and like a little bit too weird. And it happens multiple times and like some of the instances of magical realism were well executed, but some of them just felt too out of place for me. And then another thing that I did not like very much about this book is that it's very, very depressing. Like it's called The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Eva Lavender and sorrows is definitely the right word. And normally I don't feel so depressed when bad things happen in a book, but this book was just written in a way that it makes you feel so, so sad and maybe that's also kind of the point of it. But especially with the ending, like I'm just not completely sure what to think about the ending. Like if you read the book, you know what I'm talking about and I'm just, I'm not completely sure about it. So yeah, this was a book that I had really hoped to love since I love magical realism so much and since I love like beautiful writing so much. But it just let me down a little bit. It just, it wasn't enough for me. It was a little bit too out of place. So yeah, I did enjoy bits of it as I said, but also some things I really didn't. So in the and I gave it 3 out of 5 stars because I'm really just 
like not sure about it. Then the next book that I read this month is Career of Evil by Robert Galbraith aka J.K. Rowling. This is the third book in the Cormoran Strike series which is a series that is about a private detective named Cormoran Strike and his assistant Robin and they basically solve murders in every book. So I had this book on my shelves for a little while and I had read the previous two books last summer and suddenly this month just like it hit me. I really, really felt like reading this book. I just was so in the mood for another detective thriller because I enjoyed the previous two so much. And this one definitely did not disappoint. I think this one is my favorite out of the three so far. I mean, it's JK Rowling writing. So the writing style, of course, is amazing. And she's really, really good with introducing all these characters and leaving clues and setting up this story. Everything fits together and everything makes sense once you've reached the end. The only point of critique I have for this book and like all the books in this series is that sometimes they are a little bit too long and like they can feel a little bit slow but I don't mind that too much especially because as I said I was like in the best mood for reading this book. I enjoyed reading this very very much. I just had the best time reading it and yeah I just really wish that the fourth book in this series would come out because now I really want to continue with it. I loved Career of Evil very much and I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. And then the next book that I finished in February was Wonder Woman Warbringer by Lee Bardugo. This book is part of the DC Icon series where well-known authors write a story about a DC superhero. And this one is about Wonder Woman also known as Diana, Princess of the Amazons. In this book Diana is a teenager and she really wants to prove herself as a real Amazon but then she rescues a mortal girl named Alia and Alia turns out to be a war bringer someone who brings war and chaos with her and then Diana and Alia go on a quest to fix everything so can I just say I love Lee Bardugo so so much like I hadn't realized how much I had missed her writing until I read this book I actually also listened to the audiobook of this and I can definitely recommend that one I thought it was really really well like narrated. This is like Lee Bardugo's first book out of the Grishaverse but still you can definitely recognize her writing style and like her storytelling. Wonder Woman actually reminded me a bit of Six of Crows because again it's about a cast of characters who go on a quest and a sort of road trip and this book was just so cute and so fun. Even though Lee Bardugo this time only had one book to establish all the characters and to tell the whole story, she still did it so so well. Like I came to care for these characters so much so quickly. Also this book has some really funny moments and I always appreciate that. It made me laugh out loud a couple of times. It's just very fun and heartwarming and like cute and I just enjoyed it so so much. I don't know why I waited this long to read it because I can definitely recommend it. If you love Lee Bardugo you will love this book as well. And I don't think you necessarily have to be into superheroes to appreciate this book. But yeah Wonder Woman Warbringer really really enjoyable and really well written and I gave this one also 4.5 out of 5 stars. Then the next book that I read is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This book is about the relationship between Patroclus and Achilles who are figures from Greek mythology and it's from the perspective of Patroclus and it's about their life before the Trojan War but also during the Trojan War. Basically it's sort of a retelling of the Iliad but from a different perspective. I picked this book up because I am a huge lover of Greek mythology like I love mythology so much. And yes, I did really enjoy it. Mostly because the writing style, again, is amazing. This story about Patroclus and Achilles is written in such a beautiful way. And I like, I enjoyed every single bit of it. I thought their characters were very well established and very well developed. You see them grow up and I just enjoy that because you really see them mature from like young boys into men. And I also like that it had such an original angle because we never really see the story from... Patroclus' point of view. The only tiny point of critique that I have with this book is that I thought it could have been a little bit more. I already know the story of the Trojan War so I knew how it was going to end and I had like expected maybe a little bit more original out of it or like a little bit different and that wasn't really the case and like I would have loved to see some things a little bit differently. And also it is like very much focused on the relationship between Patroclus and Achilles and I would have loved to see a little bit more of the other characters because there are so many like amazing heroes in here and 
Like, I would have loved to see a little bit more of that. But overall, I thought it was a very beautiful book. I really enjoyed it. And I can definitely recommend it if you're into Greek mythology. And I gave The Song of Achilles 4 out of 5 stars. And then the next book that I read this month is Taj Hart Tolstoy by Catherine Ormsby. This book is about a girl named Natasha. And she has a YouTube channel where she produces a web series about Toy Story. And then suddenly that web series goes viral and she gets famous. So the book is about that, but it's also about her dealing with the fact that she is asexual. And yeah, this book came out last year and it was very well loved, but... I have to say, I really did not like this book. I think this is the first book that I read this year that I, like, hated. I'm sorry if this is your favorite book, but I just could not get into it. And I, like, the more I read of it, the more I got annoyed. I think my main complaint with this book, like, I just told you that it's about YouTube and being asexual. But those are only two of the many, many many plots going on in this book. This is not a very big book at all. Like, it's not very big, but somehow the writer has managed to, like, cramp in, like, 20 different little plots. So it's about YouTube and it's about being asexual, but it's also about the relationship between Tash and her older sister and about what Tash wants to do when she goes to college and about this cute YouTube guy who is texting Tash and about her relationship with her best friend and about the brother of her best friend. And like, I'm not even done. I could make an entire list. There are so, so many things in here. Because there are so many things, not a single thing gets the attention that it deserves. Like, so many things were also solved very quickly. Basically, with all the plots is like, Tash worries about it one or two times in the book. And then after that, it's suddenly solved without really, like, having been a problem that much. And on top of that, I think Tash is a horrible main character. I really did not find her sympathetic whatsoever. At some point, she gets in a fight and she says some things that I really thought were very unfair. And basically, she just annoyed me very, very much. I think the only good thing about this book is her best friend, Jack. Like, Jack sometimes said what I was thinking. I was like, yes, please, say it to her. <laughs> but yeah, overall, this really was not a book for me. And I just, I really did not enjoy it. And... In the end, I gave it 2 out of 5 stars. And then the final book that I read in the month of February was Clockwork Prince by Cassandra Clare. This is, of course, a reread because I am rereading all the Shadowhunter books in preparation for the release of Queen of Iron Darkness in December. And Clockwork Prince is the second book in the Infernal Devices trilogy. This is a series that takes place during Victorian times in London. And it's about a girl named Tessa and two Shadowhunters named Will Herondale and Jem Carstairs. Yeah, this is one of my all-time favorite series. I loved it so, so much the first time that I read it. And the rereads are actually even better because now I already know the story, so I can focus more on, like, the hidden details and some of the clues about things that come apparent in later books. And Clockwork Prince just, it's so good, and I enjoyed reading it so, so much. And then next month I'm going to read Clockwork Princess, and I'm not sure if I'm emotionally ready for a reread of that, but... Yeah, I just, I just love these books so much and I'm very happy to be rereading them and naturally I gave Clockwork Prince 5 out of 5 stars. So yeah, this was it for my February wrap up and like I had a lot to talk about so sorry if this was a little bit too long. But anyway, I really hope you also had an amazing reading month and that you all will have an amazing reading month in March as well. But this was it for this video and if you liked this video please go subscribe or give it a thumbs up because I would really appreciate it. And then hopefully I will see you again in my next video. Bye!